That's Chuck Baum sitting on pit road. They've lost fuel pressure in his car as he calls for a cold drink. Jeff Hensley and crew try to make repair. Jim Bound in trouble going down toward turn one. Got one upside Two cars in a wall. One sliding down the banking on its roof. Now turning over. Richard Lassiter. Car slid a long way on its roof. But held up. Yeah, it looked like the most violent lick was when it was coming off the banking. It was just slipping when it was at a high rate of speed and it, it caught as it came down off the banking. Next football player from Arkansas was running in 18th position, having one of his better runs in the DTP Electronics Chevrolet. Mike, you can see him in there moving around. That's a good sign to see. Looks like he's trying to check, see about getting out of that thing, see his helmet moving. Looks like Jim Bowne was the first car to get sideways. This happened in the short straightaway heading toward turn number one. Let's show you what happened as Jim Bowne pulls away. He's okay. Let's show you what happened here. Oops. Oh, he seemed just turned out. Look, I got in the outside wall sideways. And there was Lassiter. Right in the front of him, sliding up high as Jim Bowne goes sliding through the infield. Down in that Lux Food Chevrolet, owned by his dad. Dale Jarrett's car had a lot of damage. There was Mark Martin coming backwards. And there's Lassiter. Grinding along on the roof, much like Phil Parsons did here several years ago. And when he hit down to the apron, Doug, there's a water bottle. It looks like, you know, his thermos bottle or something coming out the window. Hard to tell what it was. I mean, that's plenty violent, but nothing like it could have been. Neil, the good part is you see the driver's door there is not caved in. There's that right side window. It's fixed so the safety personnel can get the thing out and get to the driver. And, of course, the roll cage held up as it's designed to do. Did a good job for Lasseter there. And the car looked... Had it not been for that abrupt transition from the racetrack to the apron, the car might just have gone on and slid. But there's really no way to smooth and break that transition off for everybody to be racing down there. Let's show you Richard Laster's wild ride again. This is in real time as it happened. And he joins the Rusty Club. Yeah. Mark, Mark Martin. Martin got the grass on fire under the car. Yeah. The hitters are so hot, and I promise you folks, the grass, the grass in this area hadn't seen rain in a long time. There goes Mark. He's okay. I think there was one other car involved, uh, but may have made it back to the pit safely. When Bound came off, off the wall, Dale Jarrett nearly missed it. Dale made a nice move to the outside, but he came down right in front of Richard Lasseter. You know, you really couldn't tell, but it looked like something might have broke on that car because it was going just as straight, and all of a sudden it turned hard right. Yeah, it made an abrupt turn to the right. In fact, more than you could actually cut the car and get it in that angle. And uh, Jim Bowne was able to drive away. We saw him going past Richard Lassiter's car a bit ago. So second pit stop for most all of the leaders. Ernie Irvin, Kodak Fun Saver Chevrolet. The rear panel broke the loose there. Drag race out pit road to see who's going to be where on this restart. There's an umbrella blowing down the pit road. <laughs> yeah, that's a pr precious item today. And there's Jim Bounds' car with a flat right front. Mark Martin going up on the hook. We'll be right back to Talladega. Well, we've had a lot of things wander around racetracks. Rabbits, deer. Neil found a deer Kokono. Now it's umbrellas. That one that bounced out from the pits almost made it to the grandstand. Here's Mark Martin's car, the Winn-Dixie Ford, being hauled back to pit road. And Dale Jarrett, I said he took evasive action. Well, he did, but ran slap into something. A lot of damage to Dale Jarrett's car. It's also going off on the hook. Let's show you what Mark Martin saw as he went into that scene. Here he is coming through the trialable section. Right here, the, the car got in the outside wall. And there's one going by. Wham, he hit the outside wall. You see him look up the traffic track, looking back to the right to see what's coming. Still spinning, still sliding through the infield.
You just don't get in the walls easy here. No soft landings. And you see the damage. So while they clean up down in turn number one, the word is everybody's okay. And we'll be right back to Talladega after this. TNN's exclusive coverage of the Fram Filters 500K is brought to you by Napa, because there are no unimportant parts. Still under the fourth caution of the day here at Talladega, there's Richard Lassiter's car being hauled to the garage to join those of Dale Jarrett, Mark Martin. And Jim Bound continues to run in the race after triggering this crash. Coming up next, live. And HRA Today, special live edition from the Mopar Mile High National. And that will follow this telecast of the Fram Filters 500K. Tomorrow you'll see live final round coverage from Brandemere Speedway out near Denver, Colorado at 7 p.m. Eastern Time of the Mopar Parks Mile High National. Let's get down to the pits of Dale Earnhardt. Here's Glenn. Well, Earnhardt's been able to run up front uh, most of the day, Tony, but the big question now is fuel. Uh, we've got 40-some uh, laps to go. Can you make it the rest of the way? Yeah, uh, we're going to try to make the rest of the way. We'll put it that way. We're pretty sure we can make it. Uh, track position so bad, we're not going to stop anymore. Well, he seems to be content a lot of times to run behind traffic. Yeah. Have the temperature gauges and everything been okay in the car so far? Yeah, he's been uh, running pretty tight with Ernie and Trader. And he, he pulls out and cools it off a little bit, and he goes back. You got enough to hold him off? Has he got enough to hold them off? I don't know. They, pretty tough. they run pretty fast when they stay in line, but they, nobody wants to stay in line. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that seems to be the story here today. Wouldn't be racing, would it, if you wanted to stay in line? No, that's what's good about it. You know, you know the smart thing to do is get in line and don't pass anybody, but you're just not going to get a bunch of racers to do that. They're going to get out there and have a good time and say, hey, I want to lead this thing. The heck with staying in line deal. Seven different leaders so far. 20 lead changes. More than they had in the whole race last year. Average speed slowed by the four caution flags down to 145 miles an hour. 25 cars on the lead lap. Two cars. That's Billy Standridge on the outside in the Motorsports Designs. Pontiac. Tom Peck. Chuck Bound trying to pull up. They are laps down. Ward Burton now posted as one lap down. Jim Bound, four laps back. Steve Grissom back on track, 22 laps behind. And Mike Wallace trying to pick up some points. He is 56 laps down. Everybody else is in the garage. 